Welcome to Lit Crit as Fuck, the audio experience in which I say shit about stuff and you listen to junk. The Brothers Karamazov by Fyodor Dostoevsky. Part 1 Here Be Dragons. First, we must introduce some characters by way of a Malkovich door or two. Malkovich? Malkovich, Malkovich. Malkovich, Malkovich. Malkovich, Malkovich, Malkovich? Malkovich! The way that Dostoevsky tends to write his narrators is if they have these sort of John Malkovich-esque entrances into every single mind of every single character that the narrator can enter when necessary. And so at any point, the story can be from the perspective of any character, but at the same time, there is a narrator who is also a character. He's actually capable of being a person with opinions, but also he can enter the other characters, Malkovich doors, in order to tell the story from their perspective. So there's four brothers, and there's a dad, Fyodor Pavlovich Karamazov. This is the explosive story of the Karamazov family. The seed of depravity and sin that was in their father was the only thing the brothers had in common. Fyodor Pavlovich is a bad guy. There you go. Bad guy. Terrible dude. Just all around idiot. Not an idiot, but an idiot. Doesn't care about anybody but himself. Anyway, he's important because he has babies, and his babies are brothers. Karamazov. So he gets married to this noble lady who's all rich and beautiful and stupid because she rebels by marrying this guy she hates. They manage to have a child. And then she leaves him for some dude and then she dies. And Fyodor Pavlovich is a terrible, terrible person and a terrible father. And so he just completely ignores his child, who is extremely young and small, and just forgets he exists and goes and starts having crazy parties. Like you do. Fyodor Pavlovich is very stalwart, Christian, stern, get off my lawn y servant Grigori, and his not terribly talked about wife Marfa take in little baby Dmitri. For about a year. Then Dmitri's mom's cousin, Pyotr Alexandrovich Musa comes to town because he has land there and also hates Fyodor Pavlovich, like really hates them. They don't like each other. And so he comes to the town and he's like, I want custody of this little baby boy. And Fyodor Pavlovich is like, yeah, take him. And he brings him to Moscow and then he goes off to France and Dmitri is left in Moscow with some old lady and then she dies and then her daughter is taking care of him and then he goes to another daughter or something and it's not really clear who raises him. All the while, Fyodor Pavlovich it starts having these parties. They're wild, crazy, probably not as crazy as one would imagine when you hear the words orgies of debauchery. Most likely there's lots of candy, lots of alcohol, uh, women maybe dressed in clothes that don't cover up every bit of them. Definitely dancing, which is a super no-no. You do not want your women to dance. Men, do not let your women dance. It's bad for uh, God. I don't think it was like an out in the open, eyes wide shut scenario is what I'm trying to say. Regardless, it was, you know, considered pretty creepy and sleazy and probably lots of young peasant girls who, let's face it, Fyodor Pavlovich didn't exactly care about consent, as we will find when we go into his next marriage, which is to a 16-year-old orphan girl named Sofia, because he's gross. Fyodor Pavlovich is on a business trip and he sees this very young, naive, innocent girl and decides that he has to have her because he's a lecherous, gross guy and she's very very unhappy with her situation. Her the woman who took her in and pays for her crap, like to eat and junk. This woman is apparently pretty terrible to the point where Sophia actually tries to hang herself. And Sophia is like, "Oh hey, what's up, older man who wants to marry me? You'll take me away from all the bad things happening." And he's like, "Yeah, totally. That's what I'm gonna do." And then the woman, the old woman, she's like, Mm-mm, "Nope, nope, 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 sir, nope, baronies. You're not going to marry this." 16 year old girl so he's like oh well that's cool because yoink and then he just elopes with Sophia. now the first marriage he got a pretty hefty dowry you know because adelaida ivanovna was a noble rich lady and so forth and her family did what you do and they gave money to the guy so he's got some wealth 
now on account of her. So he actually tends to be a pretty good businessman, even though he's well, no, I mean, you know, businessmen do tend to be gross. So it all tracks. He takes the young girl back to the little village that they live in without a dowry. He uses that as a sort of excuse to just to completely abuse her. He continues his orgies of debauchery. And our little 16 year old girl who's like never seen the world and also is like super religious is like, um, this is terrible and I hate my life. And he's like, well, look, I saved you from the life you hated and also I didn't get a dowry so shut your mouth and she goes crazy they have two kids because again like I said consent isn't an issue these two children is the most important characters is is in the book she said with authority even though she wants to say in my opinion uh, in most people's opinion I'll admit I'll say that why because this entire book is a conversation between two brothers if you whittle this down to its elements seems like a mixed metaphor but I'm whittling down to the elements if you do that with this novel you will have two characters and their names will be Ivan and Alyosha Karamazov everything else is setting the action of this book is secondary to the philosophy of this book because it's Dostoevsky, goddammit. Fyodor Pavlovich and Sofia's marriage lasts for eight whole entire years and then she dies. It's pretty clear that she's, you know, good because on account of she made a baby who is Christ. The first baby she had is not the Jesus guy. The first baby she had is Ivan. He's still a baby when she has the Jesus kid whose name is Alyosha. We got Dmitri, we got Ivan, we got Alyosha. After Sofia dies, the same thing happens with her two beautiful little boys, Ivan and Alyosha, go into the care of Grigori and Marfa. Then Sophia's benefactress comes to the town and she gives Fyodor Pavlovich very deserved slaps on the face. She trots those kids out of town and then she uh, dies. And then this dude takes them in who's this city councilman kind of guy and he pays for their education. Alyosha actually ends up living with his family. And Ivan goes off to school pretty early because he's a smarty smart pants and none of the boys really grow up together. None of them really know each other very well. Ivan is kind of an emo kid but he's like super smart and Alyosha represents everything that's good in the whole wide world. And he is the hero of the story. We are told that from the get go that this is the hero, Alyosha, the Jesus guy. Good knowing he's out there taking her easy for all us sinners. So now we can talk about Smirnikov, the bastard son of Fyodor Pavlovich and stinking Lizaveta, the Russian bag lady who smells bad and is mute, does not speak, and Fyodor Pavlovich definitely rapes her, and she gets pregnant. Nine months later, she shows up on the estate wailing and has a baby in the bathhouse and then dies. So Grigori and Marfa, by the by, well, they just, they had a child with six fingers. Because of this, Grigori, the not only old-fashioned, but super religious, crazy guy, as they're getting prepared to do the christening, says, you know, well, let's not bother having a christening. And Fyodor Pavlovich is going to be the godfather, because honestly, I don't think Grigori knows anyone else. And Fyodor Pavlovich says, why aren't we having a christening? Grigori is like, well, he's a dragon! They go ahead and they, uh, they christen him anyway. Then he dies. The night that Grigori and Marfa bury their child. Marfa hears what she believes to be a child crying outside and they both wake up and they go out and they find it to be Lizaveta giving birth. As she's given birth to Pavel Fyodorovich Smirnikov and then she dies. Smirnikov is born the night that Grigori and Marfa bury their dragon. Grigori names the child Pavel and then everyone you know starts to be like Pavel Fyodorovich. Am I right? Everyone knows this is Fyodor Pavlovich's kid. Fyodor Pavlovich's father's name was Pavel. So Grigori used Fyodor Pavlovich's father's name when he named this boy, clearly knowing as well who the dad was. Now the name Smirnikov means son of the stinking one. So that's a really nice thing to be called. And Fyodor Pavlovich was the one who came up with the surname and it's what he's called. You almost never read the word Pavel. He's referred to as Smirnikov always and to his face. He's taken in by Grigori and Marfa and this time nobody comes to take this kid away. He just grows up as a servant on the estate of the guy who's actually his dad. It turns out that he's a psychopath. Smirnikov killed cats when he was a kid and he performed these weird elaborate funerals for them dressed as a priest because he's normal. That's not a red flag. There be dragons here. Smirnikov also has epilepsy. I mean it's a it's a book by Fyodor Dostoevsky so somebody's gonna have epilepsy. <laughs> To 
Dmitri is all trying to get his money because he thinks he's owed money from Fyodor Pavlovich because his mom's dowry is what got Fyodor Pavlovich rich. And so Dmitri always believed he was going to have an inheritance. And so he kind of lived that way, got himself into debt. And so he's like, yo, I need money. And dad's like, not going to happen. And I don't like you go away. And Dmitri's like, I'll go away and give me money. And so they don't like each other. And so apparently Dmitri calls Yvonne in to be like a mediator. So Yvonne comes back in order to mediate this clusterfuck of a father-son thing between uh, his half-brother Dmitri and Fyodor Pavlovich. Alyosha is back in town because he decided to become a monk. And there is this monastery in the town where there is this really famous guy named Father Zosima, who's an elder, which means he's like a teacher of other monks. And he takes the confession like a priest would, except he's not ordained. Um, 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 um. Alyosha is the student and the novice, becoming a monk under Father Zosima as his teacher. And Father Zosima is like this really good dude that Alyosha loves. It's the father he never had because Fyodor Pavlovich ain't no dad. Because he's bad and not rad. Njamina is the capital of Czech. In the next episode, we will find out that you cannot bring Fyodor Pavlovich anywhere. There will be some raucous, action-packed discussions of the separation of church and state. And if you can't find your way to a Russian elder's cell, don't worry, just wait a sec. Out will pop an adorable little demon with a lisp to show you the way. And so, we have reached the end of the episode. We have gone on quite a journey, my friends. And the journey has only just begun. For more is to come later when I'm done recording it. Fare thee well. Malkovich!